Let's have a conversation about uh, an extension of the conversation that we had yesterday. And yesterday we were talking about the complaint by the independent aspirants for various political seats in the country, the requirement by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission that uh, if you want to vie in the election in August, what we'll need you to do is, number one, get clearance from the Registrar of Political Parties that you're not a member of a political party if you're coming as an independent. And then you shall do, among other things, you'll go and collect some uh, forms at the constituency offices or county offices of the IABC, get to fill those forms, and then you'll bring the forms plus a proof that you have some people behind you. Mm. Now, the independent candidates met at the uh, offices of the IABC and Kumbe, they have a forum. Who would have thunk it? Eh? Independent candidates have a party. <laughs> <laughs> it's a independent candidates forum and their chairperson is Esther Rairo and she joins us in the studio. Good morning, Esther. Good morning. Good to have you in the Situation Room. Welcome to Spice FM. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk about the independent candidates, but let's first start with, are you an aspirant for the forthcoming election? Yes, I am. As an independent? As an independent candidate for gubernatorial seat of Nairobi. You want to be Nairobi's governor? Yes. When did you decide this? I decided this uh, after agonizing on the situation of leadership in Nairobi and through my conviction. Um, maybe I should begin by introducing myself. Yes. I am. Um, I'm a mother of three and a grandmother of five. Mm. I'm a born again Christian. Uh, and that is the conviction uh, that led me to look at this, the leadership in Nairobi. And I was convicted to buy, to buy for a seat, for the seat. I'm also an entrepreneur mm -hmm. doing many things and uh, majoring in, in a profession of hospitality. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about a leadership of integrity and I'm a leader in my family, my community, and even in the church circles. Okay. So, yes. So you, you felt that the leadership in Nairobi has failed the people of Nairobi, including yourself. Exactly. And the people in your circles. Yes. What is it that the leadership of Nairobi has done that has really, really, totally angered you? Um, looking at the trajectory mm. of how this nation things are running, of course, high debts, that triggers to someone to look around and see what are those things that are affecting the Mwananchi. So basically, I must say that, again, the conviction... Um, the conviction of my Christian values again pushed me towards uh, getting myself to be counted mm. for this change that we are looking for. Mm. And um, the values that actually uh, my Christian conviction brought was God-fearing. If we all fear God, uh, there are some characteristics that will be in us, that will not pledge us to the situation we are in. Such as? Uh, such as corruption, of course, mm. which is major in this city. So the other one is integrity. If we all are people of integrity, which is just doing the right things at all times, even without someone watching you, if we would have that in our hearts, mm. then you expect this nation to be a nation of people of integrity, leaders of integrity. And lastly, families. There are many families struggling. Um, one time I had on radio somebody asking for two, 2K to pay rent. And that really touched me. Mm. And I wondered how is this person putting food on the table if at all 2K for rent is in next to impossible. Mm. <clears throat> so. I mean, obviously, the issues that you talk about are pertinent to survival uh, for many Nairobi residents yes. um, and, and people countrywide. So what platform did you decide that you then wanted to, to run on? I mean, obviously, now as an independent, why did you decide to go as an independent candidate where there are parties upon whose platforms then you can use as a vehicle? In fact, um, this was led by looking at various political parties that we have 
had uh, the leaders have been there for ages. Mm. You know, being leaders of this country, although the party name would change, but they are the same, same people. So I looked at Nairobi, which is a beautiful city, mm. and I looked at it in two dimensions. One was internationally. I mean, it's a hub of international people. We have P uh, NGOs like um, the UNEP, the UN here. So we are advantaged if we could use, be people, leaders who are of integrity, we could uh, harness some negotiation with these NGOs and be able to actually improve this city. Mm. Secondly, when you look at the Nairobi city in the nationally, it's a, it's, it's a commercial hub. I mean, we have a lot of um, people with different businesses and if the resources are, han are harnessed in, uh, in a proper way and distributed well, then that means we can build uh, this, um, this city towards even restoring the beauty that we have. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So it would appear as though the independents have come together. Yes. Because there's a forum, obviously. So whom do you represent at, with the forum? Who then joins the forum? Or by virtue of the fact that you're an independent, then you are automatically on the forum? How does this exactly work? Well, let me say that this forum begins, uh, began when the journey of uh, IBC announcing the procedures that needs to be follow followed for this, uh, to vie for this, uh, this year elections. Mm -hmm. And this forum is just for ordinary, ordinary uh, aspirants uh, who have come together uh, for the purpose of signing a pledge to the Kenyan citizens to, and to allow the, the Kenyan Mwanainchi to make their decisions as to who will be their leader in, uh, uh, from August mm -hmm. uh, 9th. Mm -hmm. And not for that, not that decision to be decided by political parties. Okay. So we are coming to offer that leadership that the Mwanainchi is yearning for. Mm -hmm. And um, the Mwanainchi is ready for change. Mm -hmm. That is in the air. Mm -hmm. So that is how this forum was formed. And uh, the genesis of it came about when I went to uh, take my papers uh, to the ORPP. Uh, at first I was so frustrated because I didn't know exactly what is happening since I had already deregistered myself. I had gone to star 509 and I found myself in a party that mm -hmm. I wasn't even a member. Mm -hmm. member. So I decided to go in person to ORPP to do a manual de uh, resignation from that party. Mm -hmm. And I was so frustrated because at first I was told, go back home, stay, wait for two weeks. That is when the system will be restored again. Uh -huh. uh, a gentleman who was next to me felt, he saw my confusion and frustration and said, mom, let me go and help you. So we walked outside, he mm. took me to a cyber next to ORPP. And the gentleman there was told, help this lady. So when I spoke to him, he knew the procedure. I think he had dealt with many cases uh, of such kind mm -hmm. <laughs> and looking at people who are frustrated and desperate. So he walked me through. And that is when I looked that, at that and I saw there is a need. Mm -hmm. So the system was working? The system was working, but uh, when you are at the reception and you are told, go back home. And wait for two weeks. <laughs> and wait for two weeks. What was the reason that they tell you to wait for two weeks the reason, if the system is working? Yes. The, the reason they gave uh, was that they are trying to set themselves out. I think there was this political party's uh, submission of their members. or There was something going with the political parties. Mm -hmm. And that is why they had to 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 pen the the system for all of us to to be able to use okay mm. so that's why i was told come after two weeks mm -hmm. and when you went to the cyber how long did it take for you to deregister yourself from that it party? took a long time because we were many mm. we were many we are lining up the cyber is a small space but i never gave up so i just stood there until i reached to the person who was assisting us mm -hmm. And uh, when I was done, something 
strike in my heart the conviction that there is a need. People need help. Actually, I could sense it and I could see in the faces of many. Mm. And that's when I to took a seat and sat outside uh, at the car wash and I started observing what's going on. Mm. And immediately I felt, why can't I start a forum that uh, would help to ease the stress mm. and anxiety of the faces that I saw? So I sat there and uh, I, I, I started asking people, would you like to be in a forum that we can all benefit in terms of building capacity, mm. in terms of partnership, in terms of uh, mobilization of, uh, of our campaigns, mm. in terms of uh, actually the collection of these ID copies mm. and uh, signatures. And, and many people are ready. It sounds like a party. No, it's not a party. Uh, yeah, so, like, so it's clearly a difference. So mm. it's a place whereby you can basically get help for the things that you need to be able to be sorted out. Uh, Do you find that of the independence, because we're looking at independence across board, uh, there could be the, such, uh, the, the notion that it's just presidential, it's gubernatorial as well, it's senatorial, mm. it's, you know, member of parliament across board. Anybody who is running on, the independent, on an independent ticket then has an opportunity to be part of this forum whereby all your needs, wants, you know, aggravations uh, can be expressed and dealt with? Or is it a venting space? Can you separate, the, you know, draw the lines here in terms of what the differences are? Um, the differences are we are not affiliated with any political party mm. Mm. and we are not a political party either. It's uh, just the same way uh, we can have a WhatsApp group, the way we are, the three of us. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we are able to interact. We are able to vent or air some concern or ask for help. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's, that's how the platform operates. Okay. okay. Yes. How many members do you have so far? We have over 200 members mm. because after we did a press, a press statement, the first one, mm -hmm. Uh, it attracted uh, the people and um, people kept saying there's this uh, forum, mm. uh, WhatsApp group that you can join and they, are, they can enlighten you on the next procedure, uh, steps to take mm -hmm. in every stage of uh, our requirements. So basically, and in the second one, uh, presser we had at the IBC, again, it attracted um, quite a number of people especially those who are frustrated. Mm. They, they, they don't have a clue uh, of what to do next. What is this frustration? I mean, you, 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 the way I've heard you say, even from your own experience of the uh, Office of the Registrar of Political Parties, it's a lack of A, awareness and um, information, access to information. Is it that people who are seeking positions of leadership have no idea the procedure that they need to go through to become leaders or is it that the offices that should be helping you are not helping you you have the information but you're not getting the support that you need uh, actually is the the availability of information mm. because i remember going severally to ibc just to get the requirement and um my concern was that the port uh, where the the public um uh, port shows a different thing. It mm. says you have to collect 500 uh, signatures as, as a as a governor. Mm -hmm. And then I look at the list again. It says a senator needs to collect uh, 2,000. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an MP is supposed to collect 1,000. And then an MCA is supposed to collect 500. Mm. So then I'm asking myself, a governor and a senator who is... Who is above the other? Both are campaigning mm. in the county, at the county level. Yes. Mm. So what's the difference? So it forces you to go to, again, on the, uh, to the IBC offices. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy exercise okay, right. because you sit there and um, by the time you get help, you've really, <laughs> you've really suffered. Do you think the IBC, the community at large, takes independent candidates seriously? Actually, that is why we, we are, as uh, our Independent Candidate Forum Kenya, we are protesting against the conditions that have been laid down as a requirement for independent candidates by the IBC. 
And uh, every um, independent candidate is required to collect a specified number of uh, signatures from voters mm. from the area they are vying for. So you can imagine a president has to collect 48,000 signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a requirement mm -hmm. uh, from 24 counties out of 47, each county 2,000. A senator, like I've said before, 2000 so basically is that this is this is a very very tough exercise and on top of that you're being made to collect again photocopies of id mm -hmm. from voters i'm telling you this has uh, makes it even worse so um when you look at the way things are we, we are actually humbly uh, expressing our concerns of these requirements that have been set so, because it's unfair to the an independent country. Are they so new do you think the IBC is taking you seriously? Well, uh, the way we see and the way things are going on, um, uh, we don't see whether they are taking us seriously. Mm -hmm. Reason being that uh, when we walked to IBC um, the day before yesterday, uh, we were made to sit at the waiting uh, space for a long time and nobody came to help us so we had to leave basically so you sat there and no one came to speak to you and that's why you walked out yes no one came we were there by eight o'clock mm -hmm. we signed a form from the security desk right saying we would love to see um the um, the chairman mm -hmm. of iebc we were told he's in mombasa mm -hmm. then we were advised that a commissioner uh, will come and uh, assist us. Mm -hmm. So the form was taken away and we were told, you wait, we'll call on you. But nobody came back. And that was the end of it. And that was the end of it. So we freely had to walk away. Esther, before this particular venture into politics now, have you participated in politics at any level in terms of, you know, participating in the elections 2017, 2013 or any? No. I've only been a voter all throughout. Okay. Yes. So you've never really agitated, like, you know, joined, willingly joined a political party, uh, participated in political party exercises, participated in uh, town halls or public participation fora. Have you? No, I've never really joined hmm. uh, as per se to be part of it. Okay. But I've followed closely and that is why I'm saying... Uh, I've been agonizing on what is happening. Mm. Yes, in this city, you have seen you have seen what happens in politics. Yes, and what is expected of politics. Yes, when you decided I want to be governor of Nairobi, and you obviously decided you don't you don't want to join any political party. You want to go as an independent. It's a because you knew that this is allowed in law. Yes, what at that point was your understanding of the requirements of an independent candidate for governor? Yes. What was your understanding? What what were the requirements? I, I, I was to the understanding of the requirements that they are signature collections, mm -hmm. but uh, the information didn't have the didn't have about the copy of ID collection. Right. Actually, we had to dig further. In fact, I had to go to IBC and say uh, there's 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 rumors that we have to collect ID copies. And actually, I got a photo shot of that that constitution, mm. which was laid in 2017. Mm -hmm. And that convinced me that it's a constitution that is meant to be there. The question is, if that constitution was done um, in parliament 2017, why hasn't it been uh, reinforced in the last year's election of 2017? And asking, <clears throat> asking some people who vied in the last year, uh, last term elections, they said that was not a requirement. Mm. So the que that's the big question. Why now? Even the time of the BBI, they never there was no uh, submission of copies of IDs. Mm. So why now, when there is this surge of uh, independent candidates coming forward? So it's already in law. It is already in law. There's law that says you shall present signatures copies of IDs and ID numbers, obviously, for you to be cleared by the IEBC. Mm -hmm. It's in law. So your protest is, why is it take, why is it uh, being enforced this time and this not time. a previous time? Yes. But why not this time? 
Uh, well, we see uh, this time is kind of a bit tricky mm. because if you look at the requirements and the timelines, the timelines are very short. For example, I'm vying for governor of Nairobi and the IBC has to issue me with booklets. Mm -hmm. I've not been issued with the booklets. The, they say from governor downwards, we have to wait until they gazette our names. And then after that, they will call us so that we can collect our booklets to, to go and um, collect signatures. Mm. Uh, after we collect this, we are only given 10 days to do that. To that collect the, the signatures. Yes, signatures. So in this particular case, for you as governor, it's is it 2,000 signatures? No. In the county, is it still 500? It's still 500. Okay. But on behalf of... Uh, uh, the independent candidates who are, have 2,000 and the president having 48. Mm. Uh, it's also a concern for me. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. So many things are up in the air now in terms of what exactly is happening. And speculation is rife mm. that, you know, I mean, we saw this list of presidential candidates mm. uh, on the independents are 47 yes. already. Yes. You know, we don't even know the numbers across, you know, the other, the other levels. We don't know that. But that it, could this be a direct way of getting people off of the ballot? Because if it's in law, then it's something they're going to follow. If we're looking at another law that is being uh, stipulated now, the gender, uh, the gender balance uh, card is being played now. IEBC has said very clearly, you bring us a list of certified nominees and the gender balance doesn't show up here the entire list will be thrown out. We give you 48 hours to reconcile. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. It's being thrown out. So it is not only on this p part of the stipulated law that IEBC is happening. There are other issues. There are other sec areas that they're also insisting on at this time. However, again, nature abhors a vacuum. And if there's no information as to why, then we're going to all fill it with speculation. And many have said the booklet is going to be thick when it comes to the ballot. Mm -hmm. Is this one way to get rid of to get people off the ballot? Let me say uh, not with certainty that it is one way, but it seems to be one way hmm. of um, f um, filtering people uh, to have, because you can imagine we have 7,292 independent candidates, hmm. 7,000, and uh, there are 47 running for president. We have one or seven governors. Hmm. We have 159, uh, 151 senators, 112 MPs, and 5,902 MCAs. So you can imagine how the ballot box would be. Yeah. Having people with their symbols, their names, and where uh, a voter will tick. It's mm. hard even to identify who is your, who is who is your, your preferred candidate. Your preferred candidate, yes. So it's, you think it's one way. Let's take a break at this point. Esther Thairo is aspiring to be the next governor of Nairobi as an independent. She is the chair of the Independent Candidates Forum. They've come out strongly opposing this requirement by the IEBC for signatures and particularly ID copies of their supporters. So governors are required to have 500 signatures. MCA, similar. 500 signatures and ID copies. Uh, Senate aspirants, and also women mm. rep aspirants, 2,000. Members of the National Assembly, 1,000. Members, uh, president, you need to have 2,000 per, per each count. of half of the counties. 24 times 2,000, 48,000. <laughs> okay, so this is a requirement. Keep it here for more conversations coming up shortly with Esther Thairo, the chair of the Independent Candidates Forum. We are live on KTN Home, Spice FM, and YouTube and Facebook. This is The Situation Room. This is Kenya's biggest conversation with Eric Latif Nduoko and our guest this morning, Esther Thairo, gubernatorial aspirant for Nairobi City County on an independent ticket, who is also the chairperson of the Independent Candidates Forum of Kenya. And she says they started this forum to bring together the independent candidates across the country so that they can together um, have one voice. Together they can uh, inform one another of the requirements or what's happening on the ground. Together they can build their capacity in terms of knowledge and understanding of the electoral process and the requirements by the IEBC, by the law, by the courts, or any other uh, forum. Now, Esther, you want to be governor of Nairobi, and the requirement so far from the IEBC is that 
Number one, after you go through the ORPP and the ORPP has said, yes, Esther is not a member of a political party, you then you'll go to the IEBC. Yes. And then the IEBC will gazette you as an aspirant. Yes. And after you've been gazetted as an aspirant, then you go to the IEBC county office or constituency office to collect a form. Yes. What are you supposed to do with this form? Now, when you get this, um, they are calling them booklets. Mm. You're supposed now to go to the people to, uh, to ask them to endorse you with their signatures. And this form has, um, it has the name, the constituency, the ID number the word, uh, and your signature, the voter's signature. Mm -hmm. Then now asking them that you're supposed to collect even photocopies of their ID. This is becoming too hard, mm. next to impossible. So in 2017, everything that you've said happened yes. apart from the collection of the photocopy of ID. Yes. Independent candidates came with the booklets to their people. Yes. And they said, I'd like you to endorse me. Yes. So I put in my name and my id number and i sign yes and i also say my constituency and my ward yeah, yeah. just to prove that i'm a voter in Nairobi. yes this time there's an addition to that requirement which is the photocopy of the id oh, of the id okay what is the problem that you have with that uh the problem is that when you are on the ground you know talking to the voters they are not comfortable with their data uh privacy because now you you're saying you've written the ID number. So what, what about the ID copy that you need? Hmm. So if only uh, the IBC uh, would sensitize people to, the effect, to effect this uh, condition, this requirement, hmm. then it could make a difference. Maybe. We don't know. Because then they will allay their fears that people have of their data, data hmm. abuse. Hmm. So that is one. Mm. If they would do that, then the people would actually receive us with the knowledge that the IBC said it's an electorate uh, um, requirement. So these and, people. And have they done this adequately with the other signatures that need to be collected? Because we knew, I mean, uh, through the ORPP, that it was necessary for you then to collect these signatures. Anyway, now the, the bone of contention here is the ID copies. And you're saying if IEBC raised awareness amongst people saying, you know, folks are going to be coming to you, asking you for your ID copying, you know, it's going to happen because it's a requirement by us for them to have this. Mm -hmm. Did they do this? No, they haven't done. No. Did they do this for the other part where those other signatures were required? Not for an independent. Do you know if they did this? No. Putting I'll, out the word in the community saying, you know, guys, uh, candidates are going to be coming to you asking for these signatures. Or are we saying that it was easier because other candidates can rely on their parties? I, I think for the party, it's, it's much easier mm. because there is that uh, voters' loyalty to a party, a particular party. Mm -hmm. So they have that trust that uh, the party... Uh, it, it will take care of, of, of their, 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 their privacy, mm -hmm. data privacy. Mm -hmm. But for an independent person, first of all, you approach, <clears throat> you approach um, a voter, they scan you from bottom to up, and here you are saying, I need also a copy of your ID. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Why would it be a nightmare? Le okay, <clears throat> let's deal with you, Esther. Esther Thairo wants to be governor of Nairobi. Okay, if we look at the number of voters who are registered in Nairobi, it's more than a million. Yes. If we look at the statistics from 2017, Mike Movie Sonko won with over 800,000 votes. So if Esther Thairo is serious, she's basically looking for 800,000 votes in Nairobi to win. Yes. If you can convince 800,000 people to vote for you, Esther. Are you telling me it's so difficult for you to get 50, 500 of them to look at you knowing full well this is what you represent, knowing full well that they are not only giving you access to going to City Hall, but giving you access to billions of shillings every year that you'll be controlling. Why is it so difficult for you to convince Eric to give you a copy of the ID if you've really convinced Eric that you're the right person for the job? Well, uh, you see, convincing a person who doesn't know you <laughs> yeah, that much. Like mm -hmm. now, to convince you to do something for me, mm -hmm. there are those issues in a person, in a human being of trust. Okay. 
Okay, so I may say all these good things and everything that sounds applicable to what you're looking for. But again, there's that element when I go too deep, too far, asking you, for example, if I say, give me a, a, a title deed. I want to see how it is to enable me to um, to get uh, to get you a title deed for your land or mm. something. You'd think twice. I'm doing a good thing uh, that will help you. Mm. But at the same time, there's that element of uh, issue of trust mm -hmm. that you cannot remove from a person. If I can maybe ask, and <coughs> let's just assume that I'm coming from the side of the IEBC, mm -hmm. and to say here, the assumption is that you have support on the ground. Yes. The assumption is that there are people on the ground who know who you are as an independent candidate. It doesn't matter at what level your candidature, uh, candidature is up for, right? Mm -hmm. So the assumption is that there are people who know you anyway, that there are people who are going to support you. There are people who didn't know you from Adam and are going to give you their vote mm -hmm. as governor, as president, as whatever. IEBC is saying, go to these same people because you do not have the party platform to stand on, right? Go to these same people who are going to vote for you anyway and let's just have their ID copy as something that you can stand on in terms of the support that we know that the community or the society, quote unquote, has already accepted you as a candidate and then give it to us. And upon that, we will then clear you. Could you see it making some sense where they are coming from? Not that they want to make life difficult for you, but that they actually want to see that you have some kind of standing. And they're saying you have the support anyway. If you have this, if you are running for a position, the assumption is that the support exists. So here we are saying for a gubernatorial aspirant, get 500 people from your huge support base to give us your ID copy. Uh, it's, it's kind of a tricky situation, <laughs> if I may ask, mm. if I may say. It's a tricky one because mm. you see when you speak about uh, any political party, mm. there is readiness for that. Mm. You know, even before someone knows who you are mm. vying for for any position, they, the party puts on a lot of trust mm. yeah. that this is a person who is credible. If my aspiring president has approved them, mm. you see, mm. and that, I saw that in the last year elections, mm. just because um, the, the, the jubilee, you know, we were. Uh, let me say I voted for with the with the ticket of uh, voted for Jubilee, mm. but what I looked at because I was I was not aware who is who, mm. but basically Jubilee. <laughs> you looked, you saw Jubilee, you said this one. Yes, Jubilee I, I, must have vetted this person. This person. <laughs> Jubilee trust this person, and I trust Jubilee, so I trust this person. This person. <laughs> it's very different, as much as when you go now as an individual. Sure. Very different mm. and very challenging. But that is what you have decided you want to do. You see, you had the option, yes. Esther, of going to Jubilee and campaigning for the Jubilee ticket. You decided you don't want to go to Jubilee and ask for the ticket. You want to go independent. You knew this is the battle that you have to fight. Yes. Let's assume that today IEBC puts up adverts in the paper on radio. They come to Spice FM and they say, please, if Esther comes to you, give her your copy of your ID. Do you think that will make it easier for you that you can now go and convince people? Well, uh, it will make uh, it easier slightly because the people will trust the IEBC mm. with their data privacy. So that will ease a little bit. I can't really tell mm. you at what level it will ease. Okay. I can't tell you. Mm. Uh, if I had these uh, uh, booklets and uh, I'm now going sampling or taking from different wards because yeah. Nairobi has, has about uh, 85 wards. So you can imagine you have to go all around those wards. Mm. Um, it could ease, but I don't know how much. Uh, since uh, about issuing to a person an ID, you have to really convince me, Indeed. even as much as I want to support you. That's true. Mm -hmm. yes. That's true. Yes. I think at a personal level, we even discussed this yesterday and said, yes, IEBC needs to be very clear with the information that everybody understands that this is a requirement mm -hmm. of the IEBC and not just the IEBC waking up and deciding. This is actually a requirement of the law. Mm -hmm. If the law stipulates this, then it's the role of the IEBC to sensitize everybody that this are the requirements according to the law 
and this is how we shall go about it. I want to ask a different question, slightly different. And this is with regards to the high number of independent candidates that we are seeing. Just give us those numbers again. 7,000? We have uh, 47 running presidents mm -hmm. for presidency, 107 governors, 151 senators, 112, 112 women reps, 973 MPs, mm -hmm. and 5,902 MCAs. This is obviously a sharp rise from the number of independent candidates that we saw in 2013 and in 2017. Why do you think more and more people such as yourself are going straight for the independent ticket and not going through the political party process? Because they have lost faith. In what? In the leadership of mm. uh, parties making decisions for the Mwanainchi. That is why, they are, uh, that is why we are coming to, to offer an alternative because there is a need. Uh, people are yearning for change and it is in the air. So we are coming in as an, uh, an alternative, you know. Uh, when I go to the ground, somebody is saying, you know, I was not going to vote. Mm. I wasn't. I was going to waste my time to go and queue early in the morning. But because you're there, are you sure there are many more? And I say, yeah, there are many more who are independent candidates. Mm. And they say, now this time I'll vote. That speaks volume. That people have lost faith. So people faith. have lost faith in the, in the structures and organizations of parties. Yes. Yes. But they have faith in, the, in individuals. Now, um, the, 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 the individual, that's why when you do door to door, mm -hmm. of course, you are in touch with them. I mean, you can feel the ground, you can feel with them. And so there is, uh, there is that element of trust that you will feel, you, you feel and you'll see what they are going through. So um, with the parties mm -hmm. is that um, the system actually elect people of... Um, from their own cronies, let's, let's be obvious. They Somebody, select. Yes, they select. We saw that mm. where you see the nominations, how they were done. Mm. They select the people. No, the, it's this one, not this one. So when that happens is that this leader will go in, uh, let's say a governor, mm. uh, with, with an interest of the person who appointed him to that position. So... Um, it, it, it's kind of it's kind of uh, tricky to the Mona Inchi to be able to see what direction should mm. I follow. But if you think about it in the theory of the political parties and multi-partism, there's also a layer of accountability and 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 being answerable to a certain structure. The person who's been elected through a political party is expected to be loyal to the party is expected to be answerable to the leadership and the structure of the party. Okay? So, as a voter, you know very well that once you've elected this person, there's also still another layer of accountability that they have got to go through and that will constantly be holding them to account. If I elect you as an independent, I have absolutely no clue what will be influencing your decision making on the floor of the house mm. i don't know whether you'll be aligned to me or whether you'll form an alliance with another people and call yourselves a forum or whether you will actually even defect and start supporting a political party in there how do we trust independence that independence will represent us um what i can say is that the independent candidate is just an ordinary monainchi just an ordinary monainchi like you who is working so hard doing the same jobs we do to bring food on the table. Uh, when you look at uh, an independent candidate, it's not one who is bound to the party structures. Mm. They are going there to bring a leadership that uh, they are serving the people and not the people being subjected to those structures. So there is an element of someone feeling with you because you're feeling with the person. Mm. You're feeling the hardships that they are going through. It's easier for them to trust you, especially when they see you're just an ordinary person like them. So uh, I believe and trust that um, independent candidates will be victorious mm. <laughs> <laughs> for the fact that uh, they have taken a bold step because it's a bold step. Mm. I mean, come to think about uh, gubernatorial of, uh, seat of mm. Nairobi 
and, and uh, look at who are vying, mm. definitely. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we also look at so many things being said day on day. I mean, every day a different poll is released. Somebody says something about something. And then it seems as though the larger part of the cake of attention is already in the hands of a few. What does that do to whether it is mindset, whether it is operations, administration of independence, when you see that the attention has been grasped by just a few? And there are 7,000 independents here who unfortunately, truth be told, I mean, if you look at those lists, there's some people you've not heard of. There's some people you've not seen. There's some impact you have not felt, right? How does then that influence or impact then on your operations going forward as an independent? You, you see the, um, uh, how do I put it? But I'm saying if you look at what is happening around, okay, like you've said, mm -hmm. uh, there's a chance, <clears throat> there's a big chance uh, of voters wanting to try different people. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge chance. And... Um, even if we look at how this thing is operating, it's already in the hands of the big muscles. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and does big muscle mean money? Muscles to be able... I can't, I, like, I can't, an independent candidate can't afford to be on a billboard that costs 250000 mm. And a then month. be on 10 of them. And there'll be 10 of them from Nairobi mm -hmm. to Thika Road. Mm -hmm. you, you can't. I mean, it's next to impossible. You can't uh, have trucks that uh, you are going roadshow trucks that are announcing for your campaign. But is this not a necessity for you to campaign? I mean, is it not important for you to put your name out there, to campaign, to be able to go door to door, to be able to have the billboards and visibility, increase visibility for your own awareness? You're talking about more than a million people. Well, it is if you can afford but uh, basically, uh, independent candidates are restricted to door to door, to door mm -hmm. and digital. How do you think things ought to change politically with the body that is uh, bound by law to uh, you know, administer, whether it's the Register of Political Parties and then obviously uh, whether it is the IEBC? How do, you think, think, how do you think things ought to change to accommodate some of these things that you're talking about i mean and, and and i do think that some of these things are possible because we are seeing now you know things said by the iebc that we didn't think would happen five years ago or ten years ago what do you think are some of the things that need to happen in order to accommodate independents who don't have the muscle that you speak about then to operate as others would uh basically i would think if uh, the elections has to be fair mm -hmm. and free for all all requirements should be applicable to all like, for example, we are adhering to not starting any campaign because the IBC says no. But we see people campaigning mm -hmm. all around, putting posters. And you wonder, why are these particular people not, um, no action is taken when they do that. Mm -hmm. I read an article that was saying, well, you continue campaigning because you want us to either arrest you and you bring chaos mm -hmm. Uh, except don't use any any hatred words. Yep. Now, coming to an independent candidate, mm. those requirements, the books are not available even for mm. you to begin your campaign. The time period that you're being given, 10 days, it means you'll be working day and night, knocking at people's door. Mm -hmm. It is next to impossible. So you wonder, what is the motive behind this? Mm. What What is going on? Is it... A total elimination of the independent candidates so that we we are not there mm. because it's likely don't be shocked to see the number of independent candidates after being filtered will remain in will go to the ballot box mm. watch this so this 7,000 may actually be cut by half not even half more, more than, than half. half more than half because of deadlines mm. Mm. there are some people who are locked up are locked out mm. when they finish the procedure of ORPP and he, there was a holiday because the deadline was second before 2nd of May. Yeah. Now, all that long holiday, they were with their papers at IBC. Even now, they haven't given up. They are still there. 
so it's not fair for someone who travels all the way from Garissa, mm. and especially they came and collected letters, their letters from ORPP, mm. and then they were misled and told you have to go to your county. They traveled back. Just to go to their county, they are told, no, go you have to, to go back to Nairobi and submit your paper to IBC. Oh, my goodness. So it's a real tra uh, frustration. Paul Sana Esther, but we'll keep getting in touch with you to hear what is going on and what whether you've been able to come through to, for a meeting with the IEBC, what they've told you, what you've agreed. And thank you for joining us.